Watford in the lead, I think. I don't know, but I think it's almost neck and neck. It's level, I should think. I'm not quite sure. It must be level. Cambridge bringing up the stroke. I think Cambridge are ahead. I don't know who's ahead. It's Duncan Oxford or Cambridge. Race that was won by Cambridge, whose cox that day was one Anthony Armstrong Jones, better known now as the Earl of Snowden. Choppy looking conditions, but Cambridge expertly guided home by some three and a half lengths. Oxford lost it. I don't remember it well, but uh, yes, I, I, I've never actually sunk. I've been out in, in weather that's been bad enough to sink, but uh, have managed to stay, uh, at least while I've been racing, I've managed to stay in the boat all the time. I've had a swim after. <laughs> I've, I've, I've sank before, but um, not during a race, only during training. And it's, it's a funny experience. Within racing, it'd be really weird. Uh, I wouldn't even sort of uh, imagine of what it would be like seeing the pictures. Only once in the last 50 years has a crew behind a Barnes Bridge managed to row round the outside from the Surrey station and go on to win. That was when Chris Davidge brought success for Oxford. The last thing either crew wants at this stage is a sprint finish around this long bend. All 16 oarsmen will be physically exhausted, both coxes mentally exhausted. The end of a race, most of which was rowed in a snowstorm. Starting with a victory in 1967 by three and a quarter lengths when he rode in the number seven seat. And just beginning to come around the bend now. And they're coming round, we can see Mortal Lake Road ahead of us with Cambridge uh, satisfactorily to them in the lead by some four to five lengths, I think five. Six years later, after five successive defeats by the Light Blues, the last two by ten and nine and a half lengths, Tobolsky took over as Oxford's coach. It was a great crew, Eds, and um, they were like kind of guerrilla fighters coming down from the, from the hills, kind of Castro-like. It was fabulous. They piled up and they rode that race with a boat completely full of water and uh, lost by a huge distance, 13 lengths. Awful. Six, as his crew set a new course record, he began a run of ten consecutive victories. Its end in 1986 put pressure on a year which would produce triumph from wrath and wretchedness. Move! Move! So they're off together now. So we were about halfway through the course. Reach out in the mucky water, reach out! You can see that we're much closer. And then I saw them hit a really big wave. And that seemed to stop them dead. And we caught up. And to take? Suddenly I realised we were in real trouble because the waves were very big. And we're all used. I'm amazed that we managed to stay afloat for that long. Do I just tell them to stop rowing? And suddenly... What happened was there came a point where actually they just couldn't... And this was John Snag's last boat race commentary back in 1980. Great race as well. It is Oxford just in the lead, and they must be only halfway to think by a lead by about half a length. They've only got a few strokes to go, and it is a really grand battle to finish this one. One of the closest I've ever seen. An absolutely splendid one. Oxford just, just clinging on to that lead, that lead of, I should think, half a length, if, if as much as that. They've only got a few strokes to go. We can see the finishing post here as Cambridge is now really pushing ahead. Really pushing ahead, not of Oxford. Pushing ahead that boat as fast as it can go. And it is almost level now. Almost level with Oxford just very slightly in the lead. And the flag is up for the finish. And here they come with the last few strokes. It's almost a dead heat. This is an absolutely cracking race. It has been all over the course. They've taken advantage of it. Oxford just ahead now. And the flag is up. And you see it drop in a moment or two. Oxford is down for Oxford. And it's down for Cambridge almost immediately afterwards. And it is just, just a lead of a very, very short distance indeed. Steer to the moored barge and wham! Their bows snapped and here they are. Imagine the humiliation of not even getting as far as the start of a race.